Kind Earth Tech. A taste of the future. So please tell us about taste, texture, and your ideas. All right. So we're talking about uh, tissue engineering, bioprinting, and taste. As you know, I discussed that I come from uh, tissue engineering, and now this can connect with the subject of today, which is uh, taste, of course. Um, I started to study the uh, tissue engineering because not only I loved uh, biomedicine and loved uh, uh, to create organs in the lab, but I was uh, in connection from the very beginning of my career with the, trying to do something for the environment. And a lot of the work I've done was uh, really driven by uh, learn and uh, admiration for nature, learn from nature and trying to imitate nature. So uh, the biomimetic strategy that we all use in, uh, uh, for example, when we imitate the axolots and how they regrow their organs. So I started from a biomedical uh, perspective and I worked on uh, natural biomaterials, specifically on uh, regenerating with bioprinting technologies um, organs. And I've been working on, for example, a uh, regenerating uh, skin, regenerating uh, um, uh, cornea, both uh, artificial tissues that I've done here with the University of Granada in uh, Spain when I was doing my PhD went to become uh, in uh, clinical trials approved. Uh, so uh, then I moved and I worked a little bit in Chile, in London, and then in Barcelona when I was a performing professor of uh, bioengineering, specifically in uh, using bioprinting strategies in my research to create very complicated organs. And bioprinting is something that you need to know it's been used and it's used by a lot of, techno by a lot of companies to do uh, cell-based meat right now. So there are many companies uh, behind the scenes trying to use uh, bioprinting as a, um, a, a way to create a very complicated scaffold and create structures that have the right texture, the right appearance at the macro level, micro level, the right complexity. And so um, also I was uh, specialized in what is called natural uh, polymers, so natural ingredients that uh, are the same that compose, of course, uh, meat. So uh, then I, I had this kind of uh, moment uh, where I realized that I was working on tissue engineering, but I was very interested in what was happening with Beyond Meat, Impossible. And now I could use my uh, knowledge to try to do something to contribute to help the planet in some way. So I learned about all the data that came out in the last years, such as it's not only unsustainable what we do now, but it's also about that the, the next few years, there is going to be a, a huge need for new protein. And a lot of that will come from China and India, where the middle class, uh, growing middle class is looking for uh, alternative um, to, um, to get the proteins in their plates. So I, my, my, my main driver, apart from, uh, uh, apart from animal welfare, health, and uh, environment in general is a biodiversity collapse. So just talk to you about what drive, uh, driven me and how I moved from uh, um, tissue engineering, specifically bioprinting, creating organs in the lab, which is uh, uh, where many, as I said, many of uh, uh, the, the scientists that now are working in cell base come from, so tissue engineering to uh, food tech. And uh, then I moved into creating in 2017 what was uh, considered the, the first uh, uh, world's uh, first uh, plant-based beef done with a 3D printer. This was uh, not a very big uh, feat of engineering. As you see, it was uh, kind of uh, simple. It was very small. Uh, it was just a, um, a trial for me. But then I really started from there. I got some traction, got some uh, interest from investors, and I started what uh, Novamit, uh, the startup where I'm a CEO uh, now. And it was the right moment because it was the right moment where they, uh, the moment now and from uh, when I started Novamit a couple of years ago is when the alternative meat industry moves beyond the burger. So we have uh, uh, learned a, li a little bit from Dan, from their pr first prototype of uh, sausage. We learned now from uh, Mozamit about uh, their focus on uh, on uh, the first product they've done, which was a burger. But now the industry needs what is called whole cuts. And the taste of whole cut, as we discussed uh, already today, it's uh, very complicated because it's in between not only the ingredients, but also the texture, the appearance, the smell, etc. So we started with very simple structures. Uh, we then created what was called the most uh, uh, realistic uh, beef, plant-based beef, in the planet. This was uh, done in 2020. Then during the pandemic, uh, we also did what uh, uh, is considered the world's first 
plant-based um, pork fibrous cut. This, uh, uh, according to Food Navigator, was a feat of engineering in terms of uh, complexity in the inner structure and creating with our bioprinters uh, with plant-based ingredients. So it's important to see that to say that this prototype and the one before, so the beef as well, are done only plant-based. Okay. And then uh, we also show that our platform, technological platform, which is based not only on uh, 3D printing, but on uh, on this, what we call micro extrusion technology, we have been able to do the, uh, the world's uh, largest uh, uh, cell-based whole cut analog now in 2021. This is a uh, fibrous and this is uh, quite uh, thick. Okay. So just uh, an introduction about uh, the, the products. And uh, then the big news is that now we are able to scale, not with 3D printers. So our IP uh, surprise is not about 3D printing. We, <laughs> even in our patent, we don't talk about 3D printing in any of the claims. Uh, it's about micro extrusion. So creating uh, these uh, micro elements that, that uh, resemble the animal muscle fibers. So from the beginning, we thought about scaling up. We never focused on uh, 3D printing from the beginning. So this, for example, is a chicken uh, done uh, not with soy, not with wheat gluten, not with high moisture extrusion, but with our technology. And this is done with yellow pea protein base, which is a big, big novelty because uh, as uh, many of you know, uh, soy and wheat gluten work well uh, at high temperature. But the, of all the whole cut strategies, so imagine, for example, um, imagine, for example, um, high moisture extrusion applied to do chicken strips, tuna chunks, or for example, shear forces by binding a university, or for example, shear forces by rebellious, or for example, mycelium fermentation by meaty atlas, uh, or for example, uh, 3D printing by redefined meat. There are many trying whole cuts. We believe that our technology is one of uh, the future winners because we are able to be very flexible. We don't need high temperature, so we can avoid the use of soy with gluten. We can use natural aromas from a variety of sources. And then here comes the taste. Taste is about being able to use a variety of ingredients. And there is a limitation in the technology uh, of the ing ingredients that you can use because many technologies are either high temperature or mycelium based, okay? So having a flexible platform technological platform to go beyond uh, minced meat and towards uh, whole cuts, it's uh, uh, part of the future where Novavit is working. And um, in 2021, we started to work with super chefs. These chefs are not normal chefs. They are from El Bulli. El Bulli is, uh, was the best restaurant in the world. Now they opened a new restaurant. It's called uh, Disfrutar because Ferran Adria uh, left El Bulli. And they are already number nine best restaurant in the world, number four best chef in the world. Uh, of course, two Michelin stars. We are the, in my knowledge, we are the only plant-based meat company in the world working with uh, one of the top 10 chefs or one of the top 10 restaurants in the world. So in our strategy, we decided to use in the lab uh, small capsules to iterate very fast and learn very fast how to improve the texture, the taste, the appearance uh, um, together, um, but, uh, and nutritional properties, of course. But the second step is once we iterate, we use, uh, we're starting to use some, uh, uh, some uh, tools. In the future, we're going to use machine learning to try to predict the ingredients. But then we move it to the top chefs. And uh, we don't move only to these top chefs. We also work with a meat a specific restaurant. In this summer, we are going to uh, uh, launch our product in a limited uh, matter in a meat uh, restaurant, in a very famous meat extra restaurant in Spain. Uh, which is not Disfrutar. Disfrutar is, uh, we're working in their lab before uh, with them on the research and hopefully in the future we can also uh, launch in their menu. Uh, this is uh, some of the last prototypes. So beef stick, new beef stick. Uh, this is a uh, pork tenderloin, in my knowledge, the only pork tenderloin in the world. So uh, fibrous uh, pork cut for China, for Asia. This is a big game changer. Everybody would like to have that. And this is uh, some big novelty. I'm very happy. In the first in the world, we are able to use ingredients from all the uh, all of the five uh, living uh, kingdoms. So we have been using here plant-based ingredients, cell-based ingredients, uh, specifically um, uh, adipose. There are adipose uh, um, stem cells. So plant-based ingredients, normally yellow pea protein as a base. Cell-based ingredients. Uh, we use the uh, fermentation base. So uh, we included mycelium. Then we used the bacteria-based ingredients, and we used um, and we used also algae. So the first in the world to use uh, 
It's a sub super hybrid. Just to demonstrate, we can be very flexible and look forward in the future to be flexible to use all ingredients to get the right taste. And now I will go back to um, not sharing my screen. Sorry, I shared on my screen, but uh, I'm. Uh, and I will uh, I will tell that I'm super happy to be here and uh, happy to participate uh, to the to the chat later. So if you have uh, uh, questions, I will be happy to continue there.